vision is one of the most important things you can have in football. The front office needs to have it to lay out their plan, the coaches need it to figure out how they'll execute that plan, and the quarterback needs it for a variety of reasons, but especially to see the entirety of the field. Without that type of vision, offenses can't function to their maximum potential, which is what we've seen from Russell Wilson as the Broncos offense has, not cooked, scoring the second fewest points in the league. We've talked on this channel about how he can only play one style of offense. Well, now that offense isn't working, and his extreme lack of vision over the middle, due to his height, is the primary issue. He has always been this height, but has still been one of the best quarterbacks in the league, a nine-time Pro Bowler, so why would he suddenly stop playing well while dealing with the same usual limitations? We'll get to the bottom of this and break it all down, but before we do, I want to give a thank you to this week's sponsor, DraftKings. They are an official sports betting partner of the NFL, and they are the spot to place your bets and win big. Whether you want to bet on early surprises or disappointing failures, you can do it all on DraftKings. New customers specifically get to bet just $5 on any NFL wager, and you receive an additional $200 in free bets if your team wins. DraftKings just has so many ways to make watching sports more fun. For me, I'm a big fan of the parlays, whenever I can drop just a couple of bucks on multiple teams or games, and then win a ton, well, I like that. This season, make football even better by putting your knowledge to use and winning big. All you gotta do is download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now, and new customers should use my promo code Rollins to receive $200 in free bets when placing just a $5 wager. That's promo code Rollins only at DraftKings Sportsbook. So diving back in, basically, Russ's severe lack of vision over the middle of the field has limited the entire offense. This graph from Pro Football Focus shows where he targets on the field, with the red area representing where he targets more than league average, and the blue area, mostly in the middle, where he targets less. When you don't target one area of the field, defenses pick up on that and squeeze the areas you do target, making it that much harder to complete passes and create explosive plays. Sometimes the weakness of a defense's coverage is the middle, and like here, against Tampa 2 zone where the Mike linebacker sprints upfield to cover the deep middle, Russ not being able to see this replacement route leaves easy yardage on the table. Not hitting these easy layups leads to longer third downs, where the Broncos are literally historically bad. They are the third worst third down team converting just 30% of the time, but on third and long, like third and seven plus, they are dead last at just 10%. On third and eight, the Broncos have three receivers lined up to the bottom with a tight end up top. They're running this mesh sail concept with a sail and a clear over here with two crossing routes underneath. The outbreaking Jerry Judy sail route is designed to beat this cover three zone, so that's what Russ checks first, but when it's not open, he doesn't throw to the open crosser over the middle cuz he can't see it and the Broncos have to punt. That crosser is the perfect route to throw against this Colts coverage, which is cover six skate, really it's just a cover three man zone combo. When defenses see just a tight end to one side, they're not really worried about his ability to threaten vertically, they're much more worried about the three wide receivers on the other side since there are so many possibilities of different route concepts, differences in speed and skill, everything. So cover six skate mans up the backside since we're not worried about that tight end and pushes an extra defender towards all those receivers, you can see he's not paying any attention to his right. The way to beat this coverage is to get a zone side receiver all the way to the man side of the coverage since there's nobody there, but since Russ can't read this out correctly, where instead of going sail back down to the crossers, he kind of just immediately goes sail to check down since he can't see that open crosser, and you get a tight end trying to run away from a cornerback on third and long. Russ missing open receivers due to his poor vision has hurt the Broncos on third down, but also in the red zone, where they're dead last in red zone touchdown percentage, the Broncos' 21% mark is the lowest since they started collecting the data back in 2003. With the red zone all condensed and the windows all squeezed, playing on time is critical, which has also been an issue. 
The Texans are trying to show a one-high safety man coverage look with their alignment, and when Russ motions his tight end across and this safety follows, that's a man indicator too, which appears perfect because the Broncos have a one-high safety man beater. They're running a spear concept where the two deep crossers try and run away from their man defenders, and if the one high safety chooses one to carry, Russ will just throw to the other, but it's a trap. Lovey Smith and his glorious beard have the perfect disguise and drop into zone coverage. The moment the play starts and these corners fall off, the play is completely dead. Russ has to find his check down, but his best option is Javante Williams who's sitting wide open over the middle but Russ can't find him. This is gonna look especially bad in slow motion, but he just simply can't see Williams over the middle until his right guard gets out of the way, and by that time, it's too late. He simply cannot see over the middle of the field, and it's a problem, but he's never been able to see over the middle, and he's obviously been really good. So far, we've talked about all of his shortcomings, but he's done some really good things this year where the rest of his teammates have let him down. The Broncos have the most drops with 15, almost always coming in huge moments too, and some of the reasons they've struggled in the red zone and on third and longs have, well, almost nothing to do with Russ at all. On third and 12, the Colts are kind of showing a one high safety look, kind of an iffy one though. So Russ uses his hard count to get them to jump, and he sees both safeties and both corners move back, indicating they're gonna drop into a two deep coverage. He cans to the Broncos' two deep safety beater, where he knows in cover two zone the deep safety has to cover this deep half and worry about the outside and slot receiver going vertical, meaning Russ has an isolated receiver on linebacker matchup up the middle, since the other safety has to worry about Cortland Sutton. As he takes his drop, that's exactly how it plays out. He throws a beautiful seam ball to Jerry Judy, but he can't hold on. We can see from the tight angle how unbelievable this throw is, where Russ rightly anticipates the linebacker turning his back, where quarterbacks are taught that when a defender's back is turned, he can only cover the width of his chest plate, so you can really squeeze it in there. Despite the insane accuracy on this ball, I still have a problem with the footwork. As Russ is checking each safety, he takes his little extra hitch, making him hold the ball a split second longer, and it's pretty challenging for Judy to catch this wall toe tapping with his momentum going a million miles out of bounds. This ball needs to be driven at the top of Russ's drop so it can come out on time to give Judy space and time to make the play, so either Nathaniel Hackett installed this incorrectly, or it's possible that Russ's vision issues forced him to take that extra hop, dropping the likelihood of this ball getting completed. Throws like these give me hope for the offense, but the little things nipping around the edges worry me that the Broncos just won't be very consistent. Some of their miscues have actually been really good plays that just turned into bad luck, where Russ has shown he can throw deep down the middle pretty well, which is definitely promising. The Texans are also in cover two zone, where the Mike backer is going to carry anything vertical, and this concept actually plays out pretty similar to the one we just saw, but there's a minor scheme issue that hurts the play from the beginning. As we talked about from the Colts red zone play, the safety has to be threatened vertically outside so he can't hang over the middle. But when the Broncos have a tight end outside, the safety isn't as worried he'll get something vertical to the edge and hangs around a little too close to Sutton's seam, which should be open, and the throw is good, but somehow this ends up picked off. The Broncos are one of the worst coach teams in the league, but that doesn't mean Hackett can't make adjustments and set up defenses. When a defender is cheating to one side, NFL head coaches know how to make him pay. Again against cover two zone, the Broncos call a divide concept to stress the hell out of each safety. Both outside receivers run mirrored Nebraska routes with the same seam, so now the safeties have to choose. Just like before, they squeeze the seam, and Russ hits Sutton for an explosive play. Surprisingly, the Broncos actually have the second most passes of 20 plus yards, so they've actually been really explosive through the air, but on the same side of things, the run game has literally zero such gains, obviously tied for last, so that's put even more pressure on Russ to produce. His lack of vision over the middle has hurt him this season, but that's not exclusive to 2022, that's been his entire career. 
It's always hurt him to some degree, but what's really hurt him this year is his dramatic decrease in mobility. He's running two times less per game than his career average, one yard per attempt less too, and some of his biggest career highlights have come from moving around and creating a wide open receiver downfield. At least thus far this year, he's just not doing that anymore. Pair that with a lack of chemistry with his receivers with constant miscommunication, and he just can't freestyle in the same way like he did with the Seahawks, because he doesn't trust his guys will be exactly where he needs them to. I think the 2022 Broncos offense will get a lot better in the coming weeks, because so much of what they've put on tape, with just some little tweaks, better attention to detail, and fewer drops, will make a massive difference. But I'm still worried they won't reach the sky-high potential that is right there in front of them. They need to take a step to become a functional offense, and I think they will. But with Russ's typical lack of middle-of-the-field vision, now paired with a weaker quarterback-receiver connection, and the fact he's not using his legs, I don't think we'll see the Broncos be crazy explosive like we thought they'd be. Russell Wilson has never had great middle-of-the-field vision, but he's still been one of the best players in the league for the last decade. He's been doubted his entire life because of his height, so this could be just one more hurdle he clears to bring the Broncos back into the conversation. If he gets on the same page with his receivers and begins to use his legs more, the danger will be back in Denver. This